Hey everyone, if you're a Switch owner, it's almost impossible that you don't know that last Friday, September 20th, was the release of The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, one of the biggest and most anticipated games of 2019 for the Nintendo Switch. Now, like the rest of you guys, I'm not lucky enough to receive a reviewer's copy, so I had to wait till last Friday to pick it up. And honestly, since I picked it up, I really haven't put it down. So overall, it took me about four days to run through the main quest. And after that, I spent the rest of the week slowly unlocking the rest of the secrets of Coalent Island. And honestly, there are quite a few. If you're not using a cheat guide, it's going to take you quite a few days to get everything unlocked. So after a week, I think I'm ready to review this game. So stay tuned and let's take a look at what The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening has to offer. First of all, what exactly is The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening? If you're unaware, this is the remake of an original Game Boy game released back in 1993. And it isn't even the first time the game was remade, because in 1998, a visual upgrade was released for the Game Boy Color called The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening DX. However, don't be mistaken, this time around, it's not only a visual upgrade. Because although the storyline, the dungeons, and the events have remained the same since 1993, this game has been remade for the Nintendo Switch from the ground up. So the visuals, the gameplay, and everything, although it will resemble the original, it's all been remade from scratch for the Nintendo Switch. Now, Link's Awakening goes back to the classic top-down Zelda style from the earlier games. However, there are moments of uh, 2D action that are blended into the games when you're taking stairways through certain dungeons. And honestly, these integrations are seamless and really awesome in this game. It's actually some of my favorite moments are the platforming in these 2D sections. It even reminds me slightly of the Adventures of Link back from the old NES days. Link's Awakening also originally began as a port of A Link to the Past from the Super NES. However, the team quickly realized that uh, porting that game would be almost impossible given the limitations of the Game Boy, so the game quickly spun off and became its, its own thing. It also was one of the first ever Zelda storylines to not be overseen by the original creator of Zelda, which gives it a really distinct feeling, because there is no mention of the Triforce or Hyrule anywhere in this game. However, don't be mistaken, this is a Zelda game and you'll quickly feel at home with the gameplay and dungeons once you get into the game itself. So if it isn't obvious enough already, I really love this game. And honestly, uh, even though I have a special attachment to this game, because for me, A Link's Awakening, the original, was the first ever Zelda game I actually played. It was the first ever game I owned for the original Game Boy. Uh, I'm almost jealous of people that are going to be experiencing this game for the first time, because although uh, the adventure was a nostalgia fest for me, I think it'll be even more magical for someone that has never played the originals and that will experience this storyline and this gameplay for the first time. So now let's delve into exactly what I liked and loved about this game and even a few of the things I liked a little bit less. First of all, the art style that they chose for this game is really perfect. It looks sort of like a claymation type design and honestly it's perfect for evoking the same feelings we had when we played the original back in 1993. Because just to be clear, it was the first time that Zelda was ever in a portable format. And although the game, like I said, felt different than the original games, it really was a special event to be able to carry Zelda around with you and pop it out and play it on a Game Boy. And the claymation style that they used, even when you're playing on a big screen TV, really helps make you feel that you're playing a portable game. And I know it sounds odd because if you're playing on a big TV, maybe you don't want it to feel like a portable game, but I think it's a really important part of the experience of this game. And Nintendo did their magic and found a way to make it feel portable, no matter where you're playing it on your Switch, whether it's in handheld mode, whether it's on ta tabletop mode, or whether it's on a television. I almost feel like I'm playing the original back on a Super Game Boy, which is, you know, the adapter that they made for the SNES where you could play Game Boy games on a television screen. 
And although Nintendo did a good job of maintaining the feel of the original, at the same time they did do quite a few quality of life upgrades that are now available because of the power of the new systems. Uh, the controls for one are much better in this game than the original Game Boy games, simply because uh, the controls felt a lot, a very blocky on the original uh, Game Boy, and uh, directional inputs sometimes were difficult and you would get misdirections and you would actually die, uh, not because you didn't know what to do, but simply because you had trouble inputting the proper commands to, and the Game Boy had trouble understanding what you were asking it to do. And secondly, uh, given that the Switch actually has quite a few more buttons than the original Game Boy, you can actually use items as well as have your sword and shield equipped to specific buttons, which is a huge quality of life upgrade over the original game, which uh, had you spend a lot, a lot of time in its menu switching between your different items and different weapons to be able to complete uh, different trials and different dungeons. Don't be mistaken, you will have to switch quite a lot between your items, but if you ever played the original Game Boy games, you'll see that the fact that you can actually have items equipped while using your sword and shield at the same time uh, really is a huge quality of life upgrade over the original. One of the other amazing points of this game is going to be the music. If you've never heard uh, A Link's Awakening, the songs that will be in the Switch version are basically remade and really uh, remastered versions of the original, but really brought to a modern standard. And I'll tell you that the mood it sets for this game is amazing. Uh, at some times I actually would stop and just listen to the music. to see at what point that it was perfectly suited for this game. Nintendo really put a lot, a lot of thought into remaking this game and making it feel like the original, but still feel at the same time like a brand new and modern Nintendo Switch game. And as you make your way through this game, you will really fall in love with Koholint Island. The characters and the scenery in this uh, game are really amazing and you almost feel bad by the end of the storyline that the game is coming to an end. Uh, no spoilers for you guys out there, this is one of the darker and sadder uh, storylines story in a Zelda game, but all throughout the game you really actually start caring for a lot of these characters, and you'll actually see a lot of cameos from characters that should have theoretically no business being in a Zelda game from other Nintendo franchises, but it actually doesn't detract at all away from the game and it's not a cheap gimmick where they try to pop in a popular Nintendo figures to help this game sell. They really fit into the decor of the game and they actually have specific uses at different moments. For example, you're going to need the help of Bow Wow to help you get into one of the dungeons and it doesn't seem like a cheap gimmick in this game, it really fits into the main storyline and helps um, bring this game to an amazing new level. Now, being an exact remake of the original storyline and the original dungeons is both a strength and a weakness at the same time. Because although the experience is amazing and I'm glad that Nintendo maintained it, if you're used to modern uh, Zelda games and you've actually never played the original, you might find that some of the dungeon secrets are sort of uh, outdated because there's a lot of key collecting to have enough keys to open the doors, which is basically the main way you get through these dungeons. Now, don't be mistaken, there are a lot of secrets and there are a lot of dungeon crawling to be had in this game, but it might not be quite on par and as innovative as some of the more recent Zelda games in terms of basically layout for the dungeons and overall uh, gameplay mechanics. And there is also the factor that if you've played the original, you'll unfortunately get through this game pretty quickly. As I said, I managed to play through it in about the main storyline in about 
three to four days because I pretty much knew the layout and the secrets of all the major dungeons in the game. And that's playing about three to four hours a day. So the main adventure, depending on how much time you take to look at the scenery and how many of the secrets you want to unlock as you're working your way through the main storyline, you can probably easy complete this game if you're really trying to rush through it in about 12 hours, I'd say, 10 to 12 hours. And most people, if you know the layout of the original dungeons, you're probably looking somewhere more around 15 hours to complete the game. Now, if this is your first playthrough and you decide to not look at any cheats or any uh, strategies at how to get through the dungeons when you stay stuck for a few for a few little while, the game could actually take quite a more quite more time than that, maybe more around the 20 hour mark. But overall, it's not a very long Zelda game. Now, Nintendo did release this for as a full priced uh, Switch game. So about 60 bucks in the US, it was $80 here in Canada. And for some people out there, they might find it a little steep for a game that can be blasted through in about 12 hours. But honestly, I can tell why they released it. If you the production values that they put into these ga this game is really unmistaken. And this isn't just a simple remaster where they used the original code and sort of just upgraded the, the graphics or whatnot. They had to remake this game from the ground up and a lot of thought was put into making it feel like the original, but like I said earlier, on brand new hardware and looking like a brand new Switch game. So the length of the game is maybe one of the uh, lower issues of Zelda Link's Awakening. However, the reason why I think it uh, makes it feel too short is that the game is so amazing that at the end you just want to continue adventuring through the island. Basically by the end of the, by the time I got to the end of the game I was almost sad to be there because I knew that I was no longer going to be able to experience new dungeons, new experience in this game and the experience was so amazing that you just want more at the end. And Nintendo, if you are listening out there, if you left a door in this game to have DLC with extra dungeons, extra adventuring on Coalent Island, maybe even the ability to unlock a different storyline ending, I would be the first person willing to pay more to be able to continue my adventures in Link's Awakening. And I think overall that maybe answers your question about the price that we just brought up. Even though it's a full price Switch game, like I said, the production values make it really worth it. And I don't feel like I spent too much money on this game. Would I have liked it to be maybe 10 or $20 cheaper? Of course, anyone would love it. But at the same time, I don't think that many people, once they hit the end of this game, if you're a fan of this type of, of top-down Zelda game, I don't think many people will be disappointed with what they got. The only real issue that I could say was a pure letdown in the game was the occasional performance drops it had. Now, I know if you guys have been looking at other reviews, I know I'm not the first person to talk about this, but the game does drop frames at different moments. Uh, and although I would tell you that for me, it really didn't ruin the overall experience, it was a little bit disappointing for a first party game uh, to be, you know, to drop frames like that at different moments. Uh, if you get to certain parts of the island, certain uh, villages, the animal village amongst them, when there's a lot of things on screen, a lot of moving elements on screen, you will notice that there are uh, dropped frames throughout the game. There's also this sort of blurring effect when you're moving around the screen, which it's either intentional as an artistic style because Nintendo wanted you to really feel like you're in a sort of dream island sort of fantasy, or it's actually some form of way to reduce the amount of textures that the game has to produce at the edge of the screens. It's unclear which one of these two are the reason behind Nintendo doing that blur effect, but I think it, it can work in either sense. So since it being so unclear, I think it actually does help control the performance of the game, but at the same time, it sort of fits with the overall artistic style, but it is one of those factors that I found more or less desirable about the game. Now there is one totally original element to the Switch version of Link's Awakening, 
which is the dungeon maker mode, which you get access to actually pretty early in the game. And as you progress along the storyline, you get access to more and more types of dungeon rooms to add to your own dungeons. And you actually get to play through those dungeons afterwards to test them out. However, I'll be honest, this mode is pretty limited for the moment, especially due to the fact that you cannot share them online or play anyone else's dungeons. So maybe in the future, Nintendo will be looking at an update to add, add to this mode, but for the moment, it's a fun add-on, but honestly, you probably won't be spending too much time in that type of gameplay. So, now we need to give this game a score. And honestly, the only fair score for this game is a 9.5 out of 10. And the only thing keeping it, like I said, from that 10 out of 10, is the fact that some of the dungeon mechanics will feel outdated, and unfortunately, some of those performance issues will leave you a little bit disappointed at some moments of the game. However, however, the overall experience is amazing. And it's actually pretty incredible to think that now on the Nintendo Switch, we have access to four of maybe the greatest Zelda games ever made. If you have Nintendo Online, you have access to A Link to the Past on the Super Nintendo app. If you haven't played it yet, you have access to Breath of the Wild, which is one of the best or the best 3D Zelda game ever made probably up there with Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. And you have access to now Link's Awakening, which is arguably the best remake ever of a Zelda game. And lastly, you have the original Zelda back on the NES app, which is, once again, even though it's going to feel very outdated compared to today's standards, we can't argue that it is the game that started it all, and it is one of those classic, amazing Zelda games. So, I hope you guys liked my review of Zelda Link's Awakening, and I hope I gave you the desire to try the game out for yourself. If you do choose to buy the game and you don't mind, please use my affiliate link which will be down below, it'll help out the channel a lot. If not, that's perfectly fine as well. And if you don't mind, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And as usual, I hope I'll see you guys in my next video.